Welcome to Chisholm Assembly of God online again today. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us online. This is going to be our last Sunday worshiping online all together, uh, as next week we're going to be meeting for the first time in person in nearly three months. It will still have it available online, and we're going to have an FM transmitter set up, and I'm going to share a little bit about that at the end of my message this morning. But we're so excited for those of you who are ready and healthy and willing. We're going to be here at the church next week on Sunday, four, June 14th. My name is Pastor Micah Reed, and I'm the lead pastor here at Chisholm Assembly of God. And we are so glad that you joined us today. If you're a guest, I just want to say a special welcome. Thank you for being with us here online for church today. We're going to have a wonderful time of worship, have an opportunity to generously support our church's ministries and missionaries that we partner with all around the world through our tithes and offerings, as well as hear a wonderful and, and encouraging message from Pastor Max Scott about the exciting things that he has coming up for he and Kathy as they move into a new season of ministry here. And then you're going to hear a powerful, relevant message from God's Word this morning. So we're excited for all that God has for us during this time that we gather together online today. So this morning, no matter where you're at, in your living room, in your bedroom, in a vehicle at work, wherever you may be, we're going to begin this morning with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we can gather together again online for church this week. We thank you for all that you're going to do during this time as you speak through us, through our time of worship, through our time of generosity and our offering and through looking to your word this morning, we ask that you would just come and you would fill our hearts with your love and you would speak and minister to us in a mighty and powerful way. So Lord, we just open up our hearts and our minds to hear and receive from you and ask that your Holy Spirit would come and do a mighty work in each of us right where we are today. We ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. As we transition now into our time of worship, again, we want to encourage you to find out, stand up, find a place to worship right where you are, in your home, in, in your vehicle, if you're at work and you're able to kind of find a place. We want to just encourage you to just allow the Holy Spirit to speak and minister to you now during this time of worship.
Hallelujah, God. We just thank you again for that wonderful time of worship that we were able to join together in again this week. We just ask that you just continue to move in our hearts and, and, and as you poured your presence out on us during this worship time, we pray you continue to throughout the remainder of our time here online together today. I again just want to say thank you so much for your continued faithfulness and generosity. You continue to just uh, blow my mind with how faithful and how committed you are in the area of finances and stewardship and, and sowing into the kingdom of God during this difficult time. We continue to have missionaries and organizations reach out to us and say, thank you for your prayerful support. Thank you for your financial support as we continue our way through this pandemic. May God receive all the glory, but I thank you for doing your part and continuing to be faithful with your tithes and offerings during this time. There are two ways today that you can take care of your offering online or offering today if you would like to do so. The first option is to do so by giving online. You can either click the Give button in the chat portion of our online church platform, or you can do so by going to our church website, www.chismag.com, and click on the Give tab on the top panel. Either of these options will bring you to our PayPal page, and there you can make whatever size donation you would like. Please don't forget to designate, whether that be regular tithe, missions, speed to light, BGMC, etc., the second option that you have to take care of your offering today is to do so by ch sending your offering directly into the church through the mail. You can write out a check and, and just write your designation in the memo line and send it off to the church. Our address is 430 Iron Drive, Chisholm, Minnesota, 55719. Again, we just thank you so much for your continued faithfulness and generosity in the area of tithes and offerings during this time. We're going to go to the Lord now and thank Him as we receive our offering online together today. Father, we thank you so much again that, Lord, you continue to speak into our lives during this time, that, God, you continue to speak through our lives and helping us to be a light and a beacon in our community around us. So, Lord, as we receive this offering today online, as we write out our checks and we send them in through the mail, God, I just pray you take both the little and the large and you use it to multiply your kingdom. God, use it to help those who don't know you yet come to know you and those who do, that they may walk into a deeper relationship with you as a result of the ministry that's happening, not just here locally through our church, but through the many missionaries and organizations that we partner with all around the world. Lord, we thank you again for continuing to be that solid rock that we can hold on to, that, that firm foundation in, in, through all of life's storms. God, you are the constant in the midst of the chaos. And today we come to you and we bring this offering to you and we lay it down and say, Father, use this in whatever way you see fit to build your kingdom, to grow your kingdom for your honor, for your glory. And we ask these things again in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please take a minute now and watch our video announcements to see what is coming up here at Chisholm Assembly of God. We are so excited to announce that we are going to be gathering again for in-person services starting next Sunday, June 14th. We are going to be continuing to follow the Minnesota Department of Health and CDC guidelines when it comes to social distancing and many of the other guidelines, but we are excited to open up church for service once again. If you're not feeling well or not quite ready to come back, we totally understand. No pressure. You'll be able to continue to watch online or you can listen from our parking lot through the FM transmitter. We are so excited to gather together and worship together as families as everyone is going to be together in the sanctuary for the foreseeable future. It will be a shortened, modified service, about 50 to 60 minutes long, and have family elements included in it. We will have worship eggs available in the foyer for all of our kids to help them throughout the service. We can't wait to worship together with our brothers and sisters in Christ next week. And those of you who are online, we can't wait to continue to minister to you in that way as well. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our district has had to make the difficult decision to cancel all of our summer camps this summer. That includes kids camp, youth camp, and family camp down at Lake Geneva Christian Center in Alexandria. I know that many of our students and leaders were looking forward to going down this summer to camp, but be assured it'll be back next year in 2021. We're excited to partner with 30 for Freedom as a church once again this year. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, it will no longer be held at the end of May, but has been moved to Independence Day July 4th, as we will be running, biking, walking, and jogging so that those who are not currently in freedom can find freedom from the human trafficking that they're caught in. 
So whether you'd like to do a 5K, 10K, half marathon, or a full 30 mile ultra marathon, you can walk, run, or you could bike any of the distances. If you'd like to join, please go to 30forfreedom.org. When you register, select the Northland chapter. Underneath that, you can select Chisholm Assembly of God. Looking forward to seeing a group of people from our church join together this year as it's a virtual run or walk or bike. So you can do it wherever you would like on July 4th and just log your miles and raise funds to help women and children find freedom from human trafficking. Check out this video that shares more about 30 for Freedom. You know it and I know it. During this time, we haven't been able to, to do with the things that we normally get to do. But one thing that hasn't stopped is sex trafficking. Instead of thinking about what I can't do right now, I'm thinking about what I can do. Inconvenience isn't going to stop us because human trafficking never sleeps and neither should we. Slavery needs to stop. 30 for Freedom still needs to happen this year because there are those that aren't even given an option to live a free and fulfilled life. But we can experience this amazing freedom. Everyone else should be able to experience it too. Let's get after it. Work's not done. There are still millions of people caught in human trafficking. Only fuels the fire to push until all are free. Free? Free. Free. Let's run for freedom. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go! Because the victims of sex trafficking can't run, but we can. Let's keep running. Let's keep raising support. Let's give them their freedom on the day we celebrate our freedom. Every dollar is going to make a difference in somebody's life. The issues before us have never been worse. The opportunities before us have never been greater. It's time to set them free. Let's do this until all are free. All right, I just want to allow Pastor Max to share an update with you. Many of you may know that he and Kathy are going to be moving here this coming week down to St. Cloud. They've accepted a ministry position at Place of Hope, and we're so excited for them and what God has in store for them in this new ministry opportunity. But I just want to give Pastor Max an opportunity to share about what they're going to be doing down there and just kind of have a chance to say thank you and just uh, show some appreciation to you. And so, Pastor Max, if you would just share a few minutes quickly about what you're going to be doing and if there's any, uh, you know, just kind of last thoughts you'd like to share with the church family here at Chisholm Assembly of God. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Pastor Micah. This is something that has been developing since February. We were offered, we went down to St. Cloud to a location called the Place of Hope. For some of you that know St. Cloud, it's where the old convent used to be. And uh, so anyway, we're joining Pastor Jerry and Carol Smith, who have been down there since the 90s, they've been there almost 30 years, I think, or 20. Anyway, they've asked us to come on to help them, and then I'll be primarily working with the, the homeless veterans, and right now, Kathy will be doing administrative stuff in the background, helping out the office, but then they've thought, they've thought about starting a daycare, and that's where Kathy's expertise would help out there, but mine right now is to work with the homeless veterans. There's there's a apartment complex they have that I'll be doing the administration portion of it, but I'll also be there for the guys when they need an ear to hear or you know someone to talk with. And also the guy that I'm replacing had five different jobs that he's had to have done, so it's going to be a developing thing, but. It's working a lot with the homeless. They have a seven day a week, basically soup kitchen, three meals a day. And so I'll be involved with that and encountering people there. So we're just looking excited. We also, if you look on the internet, the Place of Hope, St. Cloud, Minnesota, you'll read all about the activities. So that's about all I, but I wanted to just thank everybody in the church. You know, Kathy and I, it's, this is even talking about it. 
and I don't see people out here, but it's, it's an emotional time. And I just want to thank everybody for just putting up with us, putting up with me more than Kathy. Um, but thank you. And again, Pastor Max, we appreciate you and Kathy so much as not only have you served in so many capacities, but Kathy has as well. And most recently as our girls ministry coordinator these last couple years. And so we appreciate you so much, you and Rachel and, and your boys who have been a part of this church in their time here. You're going to be missed greatly and we uh, you know, love you guys and appreciate you so much. Um, and we have a gift for you as a church that uh, I'll be giving to you. And so just want to say thank you and send you off with a blessing. But uh, we're going to uh, now take time and we're going to pray over Max and Kathy and just the plans that God has for them. And so, Lord, we thank you so much for Max and Kathy. We thank you for the way that, God, you've used them in their time here at Chisholm Assembly of God to prepare them for now what you're calling them to do at the Place of Hope in St. Cloud. God, we pray that your anointing would go before them, and God, that you would open doors and just build relationships there, God, that are going to make an impact for eternity. We thank you for that. We just pray that all this transition would go smoothly. Lord, from the move down to St. Cloud to the sale of their house here in Kittsville, God, and just all the details. You know everything that needs to take place, but God, we know they're just excited. And so, God, we pray you just birth visions and dreams inside of them of what you want to see done and accomplished there through that ministry in St. Cloud. And so, God, again, we just say thank you for allowing us to have Max and Kathy for the season that we've had them, but God, now we send them out, God to see you continue to do a mighty work in and through them. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and honor and glory for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for taking time again this week to watch our video announcements and stay up to date with everything that's going on here. Thank you, Pastor Max, again to both you and Kathy for your dedicated service to this church and this community for many, many years. And we're so excited again for what God is going to do through you too at the Place of Hope down in St. Cloud. I have some news I'd like to share with you that many of you may have heard or maybe you've seen it in the newspaper this last week, but we recently lost another one of our beloved longtime church family members here in Lorraine Prebeck. Lorraine is a wonderful little lady on the right-hand side of the picture if you don't know which one she is. She went home to be with the Lord two weeks ago on Sunday, May 24th at the age of 87 years old. She had been struggling with a number of physical challenges over the last year plus, but now we know she's walking pain-free and she's celebrating and rejoicing in the Lord's presence in heaven. Hallelujah. The funeral date is set for a later date as the family continues to try to figure out exactly uh, when the best time would be for that, and so we will let you know when we find out a date uh, and, and if that's open to everybody in the church. But we're continuing to pray for Lorraine's family and friends during this difficult time as they walk through this mourning and grieving process of their mom, their aunt, their grandma, a friend, a beloved one. And so we continue to pray for the Prebeck family during this time. Before we get into the final portion of our series today on the parable of the lost son, I just want to share a few thoughts that I keep have running through my head in regards to the events these last couple weeks from uh, the, the terrible awful murder that it was of, of George Floyd's life being taken by the police officers in Minneapolis. And there's questions that keep rattling around in my mind of what can I do to make a difference, right? Or at a, a bigger scale, as a church here, what can we do to make a difference? You know, what can I, as a young white man, bring to the conversation on racism? I don't want to sit idly by being quiet anymore, but how do I know I can bring anything of worth to the table? The first thing I'm learning, I've got a couple of things I want to share with you quickly today, is that when you don't understand someone else's perspective, often the greatest way to learn is simply to listen and observe. I've been doing my best to learn from others who have a greater understanding of the pain and the heartache that racism has caused in our country ever since it was, ever since the inception of our country. Right, having conversations with African American friends and, and community members and just trying to say, you know, how are you feeling? How do you see this? And what can I do to help in all of this? Secondly, I'm learning that to be silent on issues of sin and, 
acts that go blatantly against the example of Jesus Christ is completely unacceptable for, unacceptable for us as followers of Christ. And it's unacceptable for myself as a person in position of leadership and influence, as a pastor of this church and a pastor in this community. We can no longer be quiet when we see these things happening. We must stand up and argue, or not argue, but stand up and, and, and make a stand for a cause that we believe in. When we see blatant sin, we need to come against it. Lastly, I've been spending a lot of time in prayer asking the Lord, God, please show me what my heart looks like. You know, show me, longing for him to show me areas of my heart and, and areas that need to be changed in my heart when it comes to the issues of racism or other issues that we have going on in our world today. Because I don't want my heart to be clouded by, you know, my upbringing or clouded by who I am as living in, you know, northern rural Minnesota. I want my, my heart and my mind to be like that of God's. So God, please help me to have a heart like yours that truly sees everyone as being made in your image, as a creation of yours, as we learn from Scripture. And so I know for many of us that's a challenge to say, God, I don't want to see things like I've always seen them, or I don't want to see them maybe as, as I've learned in this culture around here. But God, help me to see everyone as you see them. I want to leave you with this post I came across on Facebook this week from our district children's ministry director, Chris Pruitt. He was here in late 2018 at Chisholm Assembly of God. But he said this, and I think these words kind of capture what I've been trying to express and, and just think through over these last couple weeks. This is what he says. I am not a racist. However, when it comes to understanding and empathizing with the many struggles that African Americans face, I have been born blind. There is an, an event recorded in the Bible in which Jesus heals a man that was born blind. The interesting thing was Jesus used his saliva and dirt from the ground to make mud. He rubbed the mud into the man's eyes, and after the man washed his eyes, he was healed. This was a messy process, but necessary for healing. It was not convenient or clean. Maybe God, our healer, wants to use the mud and the mess of our current day to remove prejudgments, preconceptions, or prejudices from our eyes. These things keep us from seeing people like God sees people. I am not a racist, but I have been born blind, but I am starting to see. Right? So Lord, in my prayer and my desire is that as believers, help us to lead in the way that we can bring healing and bring reconciliation to these issues of racism and division that are so evident in our world still today in 2020. And how do we do that? It starts by having honest conversations around our dinner table with our families and friends, with our children, of, of really explaining to them how each of us are created in God's image. That it doesn't matter what race, religion, or creed we are, that God created each and every one of us, and he sees each of us as equal and valuable and loved. So God, help us to bring hope, healing, and reconciliation to Chisholm and our surrounding communities as we continue to be a light and a beacon of hope to those around us. Finally, I want to say this. We need to mourn with those who are mourning. We need to weep with those who are weeping. I believe when we can show empathy, it shows strength in who we are. And even if we don't fully understand, we say that I do, I mourn with you, I weep with you. I'm sorry for the difficulties you face. Matthew 5, 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God, we ask that you would just help us as individuals, help us as families, help us as a church here, Lord Jesus. God, to have eyes like you do. God, to see everyone as equal, everyone as loved, everyone as cherished, everyone as your children, despite their race, creed, or religion, God. That, Lord, we wouldn't look at people and see white, brown, and black, but God, that we would see another daughter, another son of yours, God, and that we would show love to them and grace and mercy and, and, and forgiveness, and God, that we would help to, to bring about healing to the issues of racism and division that are so prevalent here, not just in our country, but around the world. Lord, I pray that you would help us, God, to see as you do. God, open our eyes, for we may be blinded to many things. So, God, I pray you remove the scales. 
and open our eyes that we may see as you see. So, Father, I pray that as you do open our eyes, God, that we would respond. That, God, we would begin to reach out and to share love and grace and mercy to those around us. And open up our arms and say, welcome. We thank you, Lord, that, that you are a God who heals, that you are a God who restores, and that through you, reconciliation can be made possible. And so, God, I ask and pray you would start in me and you would trickle down and work through each and every person that calls this church their home. That, God, we would make an impact here in our community and through around the world. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, today we're going to be diving into the final portion of our series that we've been going through on the parable of the lost son. Over the last month or so, we've taken three weeks and looked at three different characters. We looked at the prodigal son or the younger son. We looked at the older son. And then we looked at the loving father who represents God in this parable. And I think that for many of us, there's, there's multiple things that we could take away from this series and apply them to our lives as we move forward. But many times we try to grab three, four, five things, and once we kind of get back into the hustle and bustle of life, we realize it's hard to implement that many new things. And so when we fail, we say, well, if I can't do them all, I don't want to do anything Today I want to challenge you with this idea to take one thing from this series and truly apply it, truly uh, allow it to make a difference in your life moving forward. So I want us to focus on one thing that we can take away. Just one thing from the series that, that can help you to find growth in your personal life and your personal relationship with the Lord. Maybe you already know what that one thing is. Maybe as we've gone through the series you're going... Man, I, I've been a lot like the, the prodigal son, or I've been a lot like the older son, where I just had challenges, uh, and we're going to talk about a few of those things this morning. You're going to kind of recap a little bit of that. Or maybe you're, you're going, I'm not quite sure. Well, today I'm going to present you with a couple other uh, lessons that I believe we can pull from this series that can make a profound impact on our life moving forward. So first of the two suggestions I have is that if you follow Jesus, I'm not saying that you need to do both of them, but I'm saying that maybe one of these things makes sense for you to try to grab a hold of and apply in your life. But I also know that not everyone who's watching and listening today online is a Christian, and not everybody follows Jesus, and that's okay. I'm so glad that you're watching and listening and taking in our service today. For those of you who don't follow Jesus right now, it's okay, but I would encourage you to continue to listen to these suggestions. And then I'll, I'll share one more thing with you at the end that I believe could make a huge difference. So the first suggestion that I have that I want to share with you today, if maybe you're not sure what to take away from the series, is this. You don't need to seek opportunity. Seek God. When you seek God, opportunity will seek you. Let me repeat that for you today. It says you do not need to seek opportunity. Seek God. God. When you seek God, opportunity will then seek you. In the parable of the lost son, the younger son, or the prodigal son, the lost son, was simply concerned with what? Just his opportunities here on earth. He was, he was, he was consumed with the here and now and what, what he was able to do in this lifetime here on earth. Right? He spent a lot of his time dreaming and planning and living away from home and looking for worldly opportunities to find his meaning, to find his purpose, to find his identity. And how did that work out for him? Right? As we know, as we've, we've read through this parable, the last three portions of this, this series, today we're going to just look at a few highlights, but we know that it didn't work out very well for him. Right? He went off and he ran off and was living wildly. It says that he was spending his money on prostitutes and, and other uh, terrible things. And then all of a sudden he runs out of money. And at the same time a famine sweeps across the land. And here he is finding a job where he gets to feed pigs out in the field. And he's so hungry that even the food that he's feeding the pigs seems good to him because he doesn't have anything else. Right? That's how well this plan worked out for him. In this moment when he's at his lowest, when he realizes that the pigs have it better than he does, when he realizes that the hired servants that his dad had back on the farm lived better than he did, he decided to seek God instead of chasing after earthly opportunities. 
It's, it's likely that he thought returning to his father would mean that all of his opportunities would be gone. Right? He, he went back thinking, as long as I can be a hired servant, I don't care. But still, when he returned home and, and he apologizes to his father who met him out on the road before his house, here's what happens in Luke 15, where we're going to be looking this morning. If you have your Bibles, feel free to turn there. You can follow along on the screen next to me. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation, if you'd like to read the same translation that I'm going to be reading from today. So Luke 15, starting at verse 22, says, But his father said to the servants, Quick! Bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring on his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we've been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for the son of mine that was dead has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found, so let the party begin. So the younger son, he returns to his father, right, who represents God, the father, in this parable says that his opportunity wasn't taken away from him. He wasn't simply turned away or he wasn't even told that he needed to be a hired servant. Rather, an opportunity was given to him by his father. He wasn't punished in that moment. Rather, rather he was praised and he was celebrated. Right? For that which was lost had been found. That which was dead was now alive and they were going to throw a feast to celebrate. There's someone here who's been looking for a world to the world for opportunity, right? As you watch, as you listen today, I know there's many of you that you're looking to the world to, to find your value, to find your worth, to find your identity, to understand what you can and can't do. I want to again remind you of that first thing that I just shared is you don't need to seek opportunity, seek God. When you seek God, opportunity will seek you, right? It's, it's an opposite way of thinking. Culture tells us today Whatever you want, go out and get it, pursue it, and then it will be yours. Rather, this is saying that we need to pursue God, and when we pursue God, opportunities will then arise that we can then go out and do what God is asking us to do. It's countercultural to what the world today teaches us. But there's a difference between seeking God first, praying to God, and then making a decision instead of making decisions and then just asking God to bless your decisions along the way, right? I think all of us have been there, where we've kind of made up our mind of what we want to do, and then when we're in the midst of it, we say, God, would you please bless these decisions I've made, right? Instead of seeking God first and praying and saying, God, what is it that you want me to do? And then as we do what God is asking us to do, we know we will be blessed because we're being obedient to what God has asked us to do. What opportunities do you want to have? Right? Why not take those hopes and plans and dreams and give them to God first? Right? Say, God, these are the hopes and dreams and plans that I have, and I believe that they're from you. And so, God, I'm going to trust you that when the timing is right, you'll make the opportunities available. Right? Why not trust God's timing? Well, because it requires patience, right? Sometimes it's difficult, but there's nothing greater than God's perfect timing and being in the middle of God's will because if you are patient, if you wait for God's timing, you're going to experience God in this life in a whole new way, in a very exciting way. The second idea or second thing I, I think you could pull away from this series, for those of us that follow Jesus, is this. Just as God forgives us without limit, we should forgive others. I know I touched on this idea last week of reconciliation, of finding unity, and now today again we touch on this, but I think it's, it's so perfect for us and what we're walking through today. Just as God forgives you and I without limit, we should forgive others. So now we look at the older brother in this parable. He was furious as, as the loving father offers forgiveness to the younger son. Right? The older brother thought that since he had made all the right decisions, that, that he was better or deserved to have more than his younger brother did. Right? How many times can we relate to that of going, hey, uh, I, I didn't mess up as much as my brother did or my sister did. Like, shouldn't I get more than they do? Right? That's just a lot of times that's our natural response. But the loving father offered forgiveness while at the same time affirming the older brother. Right? So he forgives the younger son, and he, he affirms the older son. 
In Luke 15, again, starting at verse 31, we read this. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day. Right? So someone here had been holding a grudge, right? The older brother had been holding a grudge against the younger brother. Someone here thinks that since the other person made the wrong choice, they should have to pay big time, right? How many of us have been guilty of that kind of thinking? I know that I have, right? Of why, why do we each have the same privileges or shouldn't I get a bigger reward because I didn't do as much wrong or maybe sometimes we're on the flip side of going, man, I'm so glad that my parents showed forgiveness to me because if not, my brother or sister would probably be receiving more than I would be. But here's the deal. Here's what we can pull away from this, this parable. Is that God forgave you. He forgave me. He forgives everyone. He's the one who first loved us and he forgives us. So just as God forgives us without limit, we need to forgive others. Right? It doesn't make sense for us to hold on to bitterness. It doesn't make sense for us to, to not forgive one another. Now learn from whatever happened. Yes, absolutely. We need to learn from our experiences. We need to learn from the things that we've went through in our life. But we still need to offer forgiveness and find reconciliation in our lives. The person who said this quote is unknown, but I think it's, it, it, it just relates to us and we can kind of understand it. It says this, not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Right? It just doesn't make sense. Right? But when we don't forgive people and we harbor bitterness against other people, oftentimes we're not hurting them, we're hurting ourselves. We're hurting ourselves when we keep for unforgiveness in our hearts and bitterness in our hearts. As followers of Jesus, we must forgive others. So I have a few questions. Do you have someone you need to forgive today? Do you have someone you need to go to and ask for forgiveness? Even though we, we might be nervous to ask or give forgiveness or ask someone to forgive us for something even though it may not seem fair, even though we still may be upset about whatever the situation is, God forgives us without limits, and we are to forgive others. So we need to take the step to seek forgiveness and to forgive others, just as we've been forgiven by God our Father. Now whether you're a believer or not, I have one thing for you to consider as well today. The thing is that this is true for each and every one of us. So if you'd like to take one thing as your focus, here's another great option for you. The secret to your future is hidden in your daily routine. The secret to your future is hidden in your daily routine. Right? I, I, I have an illustration to kind of help you understand what I'm talking about today when I talk about the secret of our future being hidden in our daily routine. So I've got a few things that you see on this table next to me now. I've got one jar that has a couple of these, these foam balls in it, and one that's empty right now, and a few other objects here, and I'll explain it as I go. But this is what many of us, this is what our life looks like. It's, it's pretty full. It's, you know, you see this vase here. There's not a lot of empty room left in it, and these bigger balls kind of represent... Uh, the, the more important things in our life are the things that our life would be incomplete without, such as love, family, food, water, health, parents, passions, etc. With all these things, we, we have all of the kind of essentials that we need for life. And so without having anything else, you could still survive with these things. But even with all that, if you look, you see there's still space inside this vase where other things can go, where other things can fill up our life. Smaller things that maybe are not essential, but really kind of make life more convenient or add value to our lives, such as maybe a, a, a job, the job that you have, a car, your house, money, and you know, other type of things. And so we're going to kind of fill in some of these spaces with some sunflower seeds here, where, you know, you see they kind of start to fill in some of the gaps here and, and, and just, you know, fill up and make our life a little bit more 
full, perhaps. They fill up some of those spaces that the big essential things don't fill up, but these other things kind of help bring some fullness to our life. And if you took all of these away, all these extras, again, your life would still have everything you need. It would still have the essentials. But right now, and for many of us, if you're watching, listening today, you probably fit into this category where you have a lot of these things that are not essential, but our wants that we have in our lives today. We're fortunate enough in America to almost all of us fit into this category of being able to have some of these extras. And then there are some of those really small things in life that are like the extra extras that really they just, they're kind of like, you know, the, the whipped cream on the top of the pie, the things that just add some extra entertainment value to our lives, you know, such as maybe going to a movie, playing different games, eating out at a restaurant, going to sporting events, having ice cream, those things that they just kind of add some, you know, richness to your life, but in the end, they're really just trivial, and that's represented kind of by these smaller, on shell sunflower seeds and, you know, salad toppings, and so if you look at it now, you see that, you know, the vase is, is full. It's pretty much full of, you know, between the essentials that we need to have, between some of our wants that are not necessarily needed, and then really the things that are just the icing on the top of the cake, right? All the extras. And so that's kind of the way that many times we, we, we sort our life by the essentials and then the things we would like that are wants, and then we go, well, oh, actually I have more room or I have more time. I can now do some of these other things. But as I said, if, if you want... Uh, the secret to your future is hidden in your daily routine. The problem is, for some of us, our routine kind of goes the opposite direction. Right? So it, we, we decide that, you know, we want to do all the extra things first. So that's represented. We have our life here. There's nothing in it yet. And then we go, you know what? Uh, I want, you know, all the extra things in my life first. And you kind of start putting all those things that really are not essentials and not even wants, but just all those extras that are just super convenient for us to have in our life. And as I said, kind of trivial. And if we can't have them, so be it. But they're really nice. And then we go, wow, well, but I have all those other things that I like. You know, like I want to focus on, you know, having the best job I can and the nicest vehicle, the nicest house. You know, making the most uh, money I can and climbing the, the corporate ladder. And we begin to fill our life up with those kind of things. And then all of a sudden you realize that you have all these trivial things, you have all these material things. But when it comes to all the important things that you need for life, the essentials that you need for life, right? There's, there's not really room for them anymore. All of a sudden, they, there's no place for you to be focused on your family or your friends or the things that God is calling you to do because reality is they don't fit into your life anymore because your daily routine is filled up with all of these extra things, all of these things that are not necessary and essential to life. So I hope that this illustration has helped you understand that the way we spend our daily life, our daily routine, greatly impacts the way that we're able to allow God to work through us. And so, again, the secret to your future is hidden in your daily routine. Are, are you taking care of all the essentials first and then moving from there out? Or are you filling in your day with all these extras and all these just personal desires before worrying about the essentials and what God is really wanting to do in your life? So what is important to you? How do you plan your day it is important that we have time for the things that matter the most in life. What if you committed to writing down what you do each and every day for a week? And then you look at it and go, oh, how many of these things that I'm doing are the absolute essentials, the things that are needed in life? How many of them represent kind of that middle ground of things you want and you enjoy doing and essentially, again, aren't bad, but they aren't needed? And then how much of your time is spent really doing that absolute extras. The things that really, if, if you have the time and ability, great, but they shouldn't be the first or even the second thing that you spend your time doing. I think that many of us would find that our routines could be changed around quite a bit, and, and in that we could see our future change drastically by the way that we go about our daily routine. 
So I want to challenge each of us today to not only take one thing away from this series, but maybe there's a step that you and I need to take today. What will that one thing be? What will that step be that you need to take? Maybe you need to seek God before you seek opportunities. Right? Seek God first, and then allow the opportunities to come as you seek God and He opens the doors, instead of trying to force open doors and then hope that God will then bless those opportunities. Perhaps there's someone you need to forgive, or there's someone you need to approach and ask them for forgiveness. Right? God forgave each of us, you know, on, without any strings attached. So our job is to go and to forgive others and to ask others for forgiveness. Maybe another thing is you need to review your daily routine and see how you spend each day because maybe you need to adjust some of your priorities. Maybe you need to make sure that you're doing the essentials first and then moving from there outward. It's been so fun over this last month or so going through this series with you, looking at the parable of the lost son and as I said, I think there's multiple things, but hopefully at least one thing that you can pull away from this series as you, you move down the road in your life, and that you will remember that this isn't just another series that you heard here at church, but this was a time where God truly brought transformation into your life because you learned and you, you applied different things you learned through this parable into your life today. A time that we realize that God has sent His Son Jesus to die for us, and that we're all known because of Christ's death, in his resurrection. We thank the Lord for what he's done in this time, and we're going to pray now as we get ready to close. Father, we do thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for the reminder that we received today as we wrapped up the series on the parable of the lost son, that, that there are times things that we need to change, and we need to have our eyes open to see things differently and to allow you to speak into our lives. And so, God, I pray that for each of us, we would be able to take something away from this series. God, for some of us, it may be multiple things. For some of us, it may be one of these things that I've mentioned today, or maybe there's something else that God and the Holy Spirit has just shown to you throughout this series. But for those who this morning are saying, I, I need to start seeking God before I seek opportunities, God, I pray you give them the patience to be able to do that. Because that requires patience, it requires trusting in you, that as we look to you, that God, you'll then bring about the opportunities. And so I pray you give them that patience and faith and trust to wait on your timing. God, for those who maybe are realizing that they need to forgive someone or have a conversation and ask someone else for forgiveness, God, I pray you give them the boldness and the courage to do that. Because it requires boldness. It requires, you know, being transparent and putting yourself out there. and Maybe admitting to something you've done that maybe they didn't even know. Or it means that you ask someone for forgiveness and maybe they're not willing to offer it to you. But at least you took that step and you went to them and you asked them. And We can't control what others can do. We're only responsible for the way that we choose and act and respond. And so maybe that's where some of us are at today. Or maybe there are others who have been challenged today by this word and this illustration. And that they need to review their daily routines and review how they spend their time and how it's prioritized and realizing that, you know what, maybe there are things that can be done differently. There's a different way they can go about their daily life and their daily walk. And, and so, God, I just pray you would open our eyes that we would see that, that what we're spending our time on is truly what we're supposed to be, that it's truly what's important. It's truly what makes a difference, not just in our lives and our families, but, God, eternally it makes an impact on the world around us. And so, God, I just pray you just speak to us, and, God, that we would hear and receive from you today that which you want us to pull out of this series that we've been going over this last month on the parable of the lost son. We thank you, God, for this time we've been able to spend together online today. I just pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to speak and minister to each of us right where we are and the different things we're walking through. We ask these things again in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we close out our time, I just... I quick, uh, earlier this week, I shared a video online through our Facebook and our Instagram page, and I mentioned in our video announcements again this week as well, and even in the, the opening of our service today, we're so excited that next Sunday, June 14th, we are going to open up our building and gather together again for in-person services in the first time in nearly three months. The last time we were able to meet together was March 15th. It's hard to believe it's been three months, but alas... Here we are next week, excited to open up 
the building and have service here together again in person. We're going to continue to, to honor the guidelines being put down by the Minnesota Department of Health and the CDC guidelines. And you're going to notice a number of changes that are, are going to be put in place, not only as you enter into the building, but just the way that we do our service as a whole is going to look different than it has in the past as we work hard to, you know, put safeguards in place to protect one another and to really do our best to, as I said, honor the guidelines that, that the Department of Health and CDC have put forth before us. And so if you're not quite ready to come back next week because of health or maybe there's, there's some underlying situation or just concern, that's okay. We totally understand Please don't feel pressured in any way, shape, or form to feel like you need to be here next week or even the following weeks. It's okay. We understand that for some people, it's a process, and it's going to take some time before you're ready to, to come and gather together for worship, and so that's a, okay. And again, we don't want you to feel pressured. We're going to continue to stream our service online through our Facebook and our church website. We're also going to have our service available to be listened to via FM transmitter. So if you would like to pull into the church parking lot and say in your car you're not quite ready to come into the service, but you would like to just listen, you'll be able to put your FM, FM dial to a specific radio station. We'll let you know before service next week, and you can listen to our service as you sit out in your vehicle in the parking lot. As a leadership team, we have put together a reopening plan that was sent out in the mail yesterday, and so if we have your current address, uh, we, we've sent one out to you, and you'll be getting that next week at some point, and it has a whole outline of everything that is going to be happening here on Sunday morning, and just the guidelines and protocols that we're putting into place. So when you show up for church, uh, hopefully there won't be anything that will surprise you, you'll know what to expect when you show up, and so we're looking forward to it. All of our children are going to be with us in service, so it's going to be a modified family-style service. The service is only going to run about 50, maybe 60 minutes long, and so it's going to be a shorter service. It's going to be um, uh, encouraging family participation. We're also going to have some worship bags for our kids that they can use throughout the service to help kind of just engage them and, and to help them throughout our time together in service. If you have any questions, I'd love to chat with you. You can call the church office and I'd love to have a conversation with you about that. Also, if you're in need of any way, shape, or form, uh, again, we want to encourage you, please reach out to our church office and we want to help you in any way that we can. One of our pastors will get back to you as soon as possible. You can reach the church by calling us at 218-254-0026 or via email at yourchurchofnorth at hotmail.com. Thank you again for joining us for Church Online this week. We look forward to worshiping with many of you together back in person at church next week. And again, if you're not ready or if you're not feeling well, please do stay home. We ask that if you've had a fever and you've gone less than three days without medication and your fever's still there, that you stay home. If you're experiencing any respiratory symptoms, you know, we ask that you just use caution. And so, again, we just, we're looking forward to service, but again, we don't want people to feel pressured. You can watch online, you can listen through the FM transmitter in the parking lot, and we look forward to continuing to minister to you in that way as well. Have a wonderful week. God bless. Thank you for being with us again today. Way out.